What I think is very funny about that story, and I've written it down and I've put a circle around it, is I wonder how many of our younger listeners even know what the word foolscap means. <laughs> our American ones will, because they, they, they hung on to foolscap for years, but we stopped using foolscap about 30 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's an A4 pad, basically, isn't it? No, it's bigger than A4. It's a different size from A4. It's bigger than, it's longer and thinner than A4. But foolscap is a, is a, we used to have both sizes of paper. Do you want this in foolscap or A4? A4 was the, the, the Johnny come lately of paper sizes. Welcome to Own It, your business and your life with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing money and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Morning, caller. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Here we are. Here we are again after only. I mean, it's like Groundhog Day, isn't it? Feast or famine, love. Feast or famine. Yes, yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Do you want to start by telling us about your week? Okay, I will indeed. Yes, this week I've been relearning the art of job applications. <laughs> ah. Because I've been helping Phoebe to do hers, how to get her CV up to date and then how to write the covering letters. And then one le- one person, Brighton Chamber, who are looking for an events manager, uh, not an events manager, an events assistant, asked Phoebe to tell a story. So I was exploring the story arc with her and the hero's journey and all that business and uh, get- getting her to write a 300 word story, which was quite fun. Hmm. I've also had lunch, lunches with various people, and isn't it funny how the universe provides sometimes? Um, I was complaining about how I have to de- delete several of the top 10 apps off my phone to, in order to be able to download an upgrade, you know, for the operating system. And someone just turned around and said, oh, I'll get you a new phone. Don't worry. What do you want, a 6 Plus or a 7 Plus? Oh. I said, well, 7 Plus would be lovely. They said, yeah, because I'd referred some business to them, so they're just going to get me a new phone and pay for my um, – because I barely use it as a phone, so they're just going to pay for my lovely. contract lovely. for the next two years. You so, remember Dan that used to look after my computer? I do you? indeed, yes. Yes, I, yes I, um, he always told me – yesterday you said you got the 16 meg. Get, he always told me get the biggest one of everything because you always yeah. need more space than you think. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that yeah. was nice. And I, I must say, it was a, a really um, interesting moment because I sat there and I felt, you know, I sort of felt like I should say, oh no, you're all right, don't worry. I know, <laughs> I know. Isn't that interesting? Our solo op- operators, I was going to say solo women, but I don't think it's that necessarily. You know, if you're used to managing yourself by yourself all your life, yeah. when some kindness like that comes along, it feels too much sometimes, yeah. doesn't it? And this, and this person's got a contract with the same provider I use, so we know that they'll work in Greece. And yeah. he, I think he's got up to five phones on his thing, which he's not using, so he's got yeah. a spare, spare space for an extra Yeah, phone. yeah, yeah. But I, I had all these um, warring feelings in me. Mm. Oh, can I still be independent? You know, can, yes. I, can I rely on someone else? Yes. Should I be saying yes? Then, my, then there was this big voice going... Just say yes, thank Quite. you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you is a good word in there. Good expression, isn't it, in yeah, those circumstances? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yes, that was really nice. And then, and then, but I made a big mistake yesterday. I had a lunch appointment and then I had, um, I was going out for dinner with Irving and the kids and I really felt quite overstuffed. Yes, later. I know. I Even know. though I tried to pace myself and, you know, order little things at lunch. Overfaced. I couldn't do that anymore, actually. No, it's, it's too much food, isn't it? <laughs> it's too much food. And we never thought we'd say that because we actually quite like our food, don't oh, we? Yeah, we do. We like our grub, yes. <laughs> so so that's, that's pretty much my week at the moment. Um, yeah, job applications dominate all. Can we talk about job applications for a minute? Because um, it's very similar to some of my clients occasionally pitching for things. And occasionally we talk about CVs and things. These days, we tend to go for a sort of multimedia PDF with pictures and bullet points and all sorts of things, rather than a CV typed up with a covering letter like we used to do in the olden days. 
Yeah, well, it's more of a, sit, a covering note on an email, mm. uh, a, a, a one or two page CV with link live links to click through to watch videos and things. Yeah, well, I like the the, the colourful PDF with highlights and um, images, and I can't. There's a woman I know who does it really well, and I asked another woman this week, "How did you do it?" And she described it exactly like that. And I, oh, yeah, that's what I like these days. Uh, oh, okay. So, so I think because I'm not very good at graphic design, and I'm not, I'm not very good. Good at point. Video. Yes. So, you know, so that's why I haven't gone down. Yes. That route. You know, you're yes. a, a bit like an infographic kind of thing. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's like me in a page. Oh, that would be really nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, no, wouldn't it? Because so all the details there and you've got, you know, um, you've got a lovely photo of Phoebe and you've got career highlights today and you've got, you know, th three things in my life I'm proud of. And I don't know. Oh, you know. that sounds very sexy. Exactly. Exactly. The, uh, the details of the lady who does it. Well, I, no, because um, I don't think she d does that anymore. But what I'm saying is that's the direction that, that, they, that CVs, etc. seem to be going in. Well, I would, I would think especially in the, in the digital age. Quite. It, and it's really just to distinguish yourself from all those dreary... Do you remember in the olden days when we used to hire people, we used to get stacks and stacks of sort of yeah. handwritten covered letters over dull typed things that all had to look the same. Now it's about distinguishing yourself. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's a really nice idea. I it is, isn't it? Beyond my skills. and that's a Well, point. I don't think it's that difficult, but if I could do it, it's a new it's a new business opportunity really and a terribly simple one maybe that's my software thing nicola where we turn that into a right. downloadable pdf thing and you can look like this or that or that you send in your cv you say what kind of jobs you're going for you say what colors you schemes you like and out comes a beautiful and so you've got still got the option beautiful to download one, yeah and a beautiful start, download yeah and and as all best business ideas it could be run by a spotty teenager quite and it's very simple so, yes. No, I like that a lot. Yes, and, and all you have to do is check it over at the end to make sure it was okay. Yes. Oh, look at that! We've come up with a new business idea in the first five we minutes. We have. Fortunately, neither of us have got time to make that happen. <laughs> if, anybody, if anybody's listening, have that one with our. Yeah, you know, have that one on us. us. Please yes, have that one on us. <laughs> because I want to get a Phoebe's done. Yes. <laughs> what about you then? Well, I've got rather a lot to tell you in this oh, section goodness. and almost nothing to tell you in the next one. So oh. I'll bang on a bit. So uh, what I didn't tell you yesterday when we were doing our New Year planning one is that my first appointment of 2019 was a visiting beautician because uh, two months since I've left the West Country, it was time for toenails and a haircut and fingernails and all sorts of things. And I broke a nail before Christmas, which meant I cancelled my Christmas beauty appointment up on ones with common with sue because actually if you've got one missing nine fingers doesn't look nice it looks yeah. to me it looks ugly maybe because i'm a mathematician i don't know so um i had a weird experience where um at the bottom of my road there is a beautician and two hairdressers and i spent some time in advance of monday calling them up i left a message on the beautician's answering machine they never rang me back and the two websites and facebook pages and telephone numbers of the two hairdressers either didn't work or didn't connect or whatever and i felt well this is a sign from the big u so i went away and i googled home visiting ones and the home visiting ha uh, beautician that came at nine o'clock was absolutely lovely and i spoke to her on saturday and she said could she come in the evening and i said no because this house is very dark and you won't be able to see and she said it's just that I've got a, a, a little girl and I said um, okay she said let me find a time when I can come and on Sunday she texted me to say nine o'clock on Monday morning I thought oh I really don't want that but because she'd already explained to me how busy she was I just grabbed it so it was brilliant because I had to get up for nine o'clock on my first morning which I probably wouldn't have done apart from that and I'm here to tell you that she did a nice job I, and she'll come again and I liked her a lot. Uh, second day a hairdresser called would you believe it Nicola the one thing I really don't need any more of in my life is is anyone called Nicola she's my fifth <laughs> honestly I've got you including you I've got five Nicolas in my life now um, anyway but and actually I'm not sure that she was as good as the beautician but my hair is so short she was in and out within 20 minutes as I promised um, I don't think it's as good as the one, you know, I fell in love with the hairdresser down in, um, in the Somerset. don't think she's as good as that, but she's not bad, you know, and I can see out of my eyes now um, and it'll settle down in, in a while. But it was a strange thing of, of local businesses with their contact methods not working. Yeah, that is funny, isn't it? I think, I think what happens is that they get all excited about, you know, the idea of social media for their business and they set it all up and then they just don't maintain it. And there's nobody in the salon or, or you know, designated to do it. And, and, and the wheel, Well, the wheel. I mean, in theory, that means it's not needed because they've got a business where, oh, really? that, where repeat business is working for them. 
or it means that it's it is needed, but there isn't anyone with any who's been dele- given the responsibility of looking after it. Yeah, and actually, that same lady I talked about when we were talking about pitching and colourful CVs, that's the sort of thing she does. She notices in her local. Um, uh, community exactly that sort of opportunity and then she pitches it to them but she said a problem with that and you might understand this is that um, there's there's expenditure that goes with that and you can't prove direct results from that expenditure you can you can prove you know you can pr- you can see improvement but you can't necessarily anyway whatever yeah, no, um, it, I mean I, I filled in a, a social media examiner quick questionnaire yesterday which they're obviously trying to find the pain points of their audience so that they can address those in their marketing of social media marketing world and um because you know they're, they're they're documenting their promotion of this big event and you know they're struggling a little bit which is very admirable of them to be sharing it online um and i so you know because i enjoy their content and i've got lots of value from it i spent quite a bit of time yesterday well quite a bit i'm half now filling in their their quiz and I and one of the things I said that is a challenge is directly um, tracking your mm. Mm. There is There is a tool called Wicked Reports, but okay. it's really for corporates. It's not for yes, you know, no. like us. It's not for the local hairdresser, is it? No, definitely mm. not. <laughs> in, in, in Chatterton Village, as it's called no, here. Chatterton Village. No. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, I've, I've I've been doing this experiment with my one one uh, video a day. And I yes. can see across all my social media platforms all the green arrows pointing upwards. Well, uh, and what we know, you and I, is if we don't do too many new initiatives simultaneously, you could attribute that to that, couldn't you? Yeah, I totally was. The only, yeah. It's the only new thing I've done in the last couple of months. Well, well done, Nicola. Not typical of either of us, actually, is it? No. Just to do one new thing. So <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I have been doing lots of other new things, but not, not around my, my no. business. <laughs> no. Good, good, good. So shall I carry on? Got yeah. more to tell you here. You. Um, so I sort of decided, you remember that book by Danny, somebody or other, called The Yes Man, where he decides, and in fact, actually, um, the woman that makes the TV programmes, Shonda Rhimes, she did it as well. They both wrote books about saying yes to more things. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I sort of decided that 2019 would be my year of saying yes to more things. Um, and an invitation came on day one, which if you remember, I told you yesterday was the day I was really poorly in bed and couldn't eat or drink or get out of my nighty, And it was woo woo but it's on the extreme end of woo woo and I thought about it for a day and I consulted another um woo woo person who helped me make the decision to say actually no to the first thing that came in <laughs> <laughs> but on on day two I received a a, a a PM via Facebook from a woman I coached right back at the beginning in 2002 wow. and it's the lady I always tell you about when I say I coached her to find a life partner and that how easy that is you just get them looking and feeling great and you get them out of the house remember that one yeah anyway they got married way back then and they set up home and they got two dogs and she sent me a message saying that she was living back where she was when I first met her and I said oh I didn't even know you still owned that flat and she said yes she did because she was writing to let me know that actually they'd got divorced but that's not a bad result because I think they've probably been together for 12 or 15 years or and then this there now so that's quite impressive I think that, uh, yeah, anyway kind of a relationship now quite yes anyway her her pad's quite nearby 20 minutes or so and she wanted to get together and she's coming over to see me in a fortnight or so and she's been she came through on day two and I was still quite poorly so she's been very solicitous on pm of looking after me to make sure I've returned to full health which is quite nice but I've got some things in January I want to get out of the way first before I allow her to come around and visit and Fridays often are like today generally off I've got a group call this afternoon but there's a big chunk of personal time often for me on a Friday or sort of overflow time so she's coming my one of my first ever clients is coming to visit me in 2019 and we met in 2002 well that's amazing isn't it it is amazing and actually basically she wants me to do with her again what we did last time which is get her hit together oh right okay well, yeah, uh, get, get our life together she's back yeah. in the same flat and back in the same emotional situation as she was when we worked together before oh <laughs> oh well but she's learned things presumably well she's had two decades of quite nice in in, in yeah. the intervening yes yeah. and then on monday i did my tax return which i left much normal much later than i normally do but i didn't feel any stress about it because it's not due for another i don't know three weeks yet yeah and also my systems are so good i can pull it together really fast um but my accountant wrote to say 
last week actually when I was still off saying can we have it and he does my company account so he'd already got the main bulk of my income you know the the bit you put through under PAYE and the dividend that you take yeah. so all he needed was my rental accounts and I have fantastic accounts for that and bank interest which I think amounted to sixpence Oh, don't talk about bank interest. I know. Isn't it? I know. I mean, honestly, you're almost paying them to look after your money, aren't you? Yeah, I know. We I had know. a very funny conversation last night with, um, you know, because obviously Nelson Phoebe's got left some money by Steve. Hmm. And, uh, Nelson says it's actually really been preying on his mind. He said he he's he took the decision to move some into um, an account that he can't get at for a year. And Irving and uh, my faces were an absolute picture because we, you know, we, we were, well, A, we were just, well, we we understood why he did it. But actually he said it, he, it made him feel really uncomfortable every time he logged into his online yeah. banking to see yeah. a large sum of money sitting there. Yes. Uh, and he, he's bought a car and he's paid for driving lessons and he's done certain things. He's got, he's, he's at college now. But um, we just looked at each other and, and Irving said, how much interest are you getting on that then? And um, it was something like three, two or three percent. The lady, well, the lady, that's, not, the bank, that's not bad actually. Well, the, the the lady in the bank was quite honest with him, and he made the decision knowing that he wasn't going to earn anything on it. Hmm. But you know, I we we both sort of said, oh, we should we should talk to us first, Nels. You could have got higher interest rate somewhere. Well, I'm not sure you could actually. You could have got a better return, but I don't think you could have a higher interest rate because HSBC, where I bank, on the bottom of the statements, it says if you put a hundred thousand pounds into your current account, we will pay you naught point naught percent interest on it. That is shocking. I know. Oh my god, I can't bear I know. it. Anyway, I no, know. I can't bear it. Yes, but but anyway, it's made him feel more comfortable having a sum of the a, a an amount of the money stashed in an account he he can't get at it for a year. I I'm not, I was couldn't quite work it out if it's he can't get at it for a year or if he has to give a year's notice. Yes. Well, do you know what, Nicola? I'm slightly with him, and I'll tell you why. You know, I'm expecting some money yeah. to come my way, not not from a bereavement, but a similar thing. And they do say if you are the sudden recipient of a largish sum of money and Nelson's money is big by his own standards. Is, yeah. You shouldn't touch it for a year. They, that's one, that's one of the, the sort of lottery type advices is you don't touch it for a year because you're likely to be, and I quite like Nelson for this. You're likely to be a bit mad in the first period of yeah. time, but once you've adjusted to it, you make better decisions for it. Well, they, they both hung on to it for about a year. They both still, yeah. still got it. And yeah, um, and, Good. And, you know, the only thing he spent it on was driving lessons in a car. Well, I think Steve would be pleased with that as a way of spending it, don't you? Oh, no, absolutely, because it makes yeah. him, well, it's, it's given him a job, basically. Yeah, he quite. In the evening, so. Yeah, so he, well, what a very sensible young man he's turned out to be. Oh, they're very both. They're both very good with their money. They get that from their father. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> And always, Irving was always known for being careful with his cash. But yes. Know, that, is that a polite way of saying it? Yeah, last to the bar. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, anyway, so while I was doing my tax returns, I also did a, a review of expenditure, slash and burn. You know, it's always January yeah, is always yeah. a good time to do that. Let, then, let, let them creep back in as the year goes on and then slash yeah. and burn them again next Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. You tell me now what's fueled your fire. Well, one of the first things is how many digital marketing jobs there are out there at, at entry level. Um, we've come across three just this week alone. And I know that the economy is supposed to be tanking, but obviously the digital marketing realm is not tanking because um, the company Phoebe's going to see today is a, a PR company that then started a digital arm and they, then they merged it. And they've got some really quite big clients, you know, it's a big, big, big corporation clients. And then there's a couple of others, some other people are sending, now the word's getting out that she's looking, you know, his clients are sending things. And there are, you know, obviously, if you're in, if you're interested in digital marketing at all, and, you know, there's, there are plenty of jobs out there at entry level. And the other thing that's um, got me going this, this week is my client, um, Jane, is, you know, the Huna client, is setting yes. up a 21-day challenge. And she did one a couple of years ago, and I've done a few, as you know. Yes. And, um so we're, you know, we're, we're doing this and we're setting it up so it's hardly any work to her. She just has to be there to answer questions. And then, as, as luck would have it, I came across um, James at superfastbusiness.com has done a blog post this week on the top 10 most downloaded podcast episodes. And I found a chap in there who's actually an expert on setting up challenges. So if anyone's interested in doing challenge marketing, as it's called, um, 
it gets gets potential clients and every time I've done it I've definitely got one or two clients from it for Glicks and Leads Academy so yeah head head on over to Superfast Business and look for the um, Challenge Marketing podcast well I'm going to do that because I should write if you can give me our top 10 downloaded podcast episodes I could write a blog for us on that topic oh what a fantastic idea yes oh okay very good okay yes and what's Fuel Draw Fire then Ah, well, on the day this goes out, which is a week today, Friday the 18th, I think it is, I will be in West London running a cash flow game. And it's the oh. first time I've run a cash flow game since September 2016. And I lent on that day, I gave, because I knew I was about to become a digital nomad, I gave the kit, the game, the calculators, the that was easy button, the rubbers, the pencils and everything to a client. And she brought it back to me last summer. So she had it for two years and didn't use it. She brought it back to me last summer. I haven't used it. And as long as I remember to take it with me next uh, Friday, by the time listeners are listening to this, I'll be knee deep in a cash flow game with my clients from Club 100. Um, several, all of whom except one have played before, but such a long time ago they won't remember um and i've got to be up it's 18 miles from here across london on a friday morning at rush hour i've allowed three hours to drive 18 miles across london and i was getting myself my knickers in a knot frankly about getting up so early um six o'clock in the morning or leaving the house at six o'clock morning and i was being a bit of a wimp about it until one of the delegates said she was taking the red eye flight down from edinburgh for it and i thought it's going to take her the same time to travel down from edinburgh than it is to take me 18 miles to drive across London in Russia. Can you believe it? So we both had a little chat on um, uh, private message and I went, oh, I'm so worried about driving across London at that time of the morning. So long since I've done it. She went, oh, I'm so worried about coming back. We both had this and then we went, should we just stop worrying about this? It'll be fine. We'll both be there. It'll be fine. It's a, it's a funny old thing. But anyway, well, I'm excited is what's fueled my fire. I'm excited about running a cash for a game. You know I absolutely love doing that. Can't wait. Yeah, just for the benefit of any new listeners who don't know what a cash flow game oh, is. Oh, yes. Good thinking, Snowy. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which was the first ever book, I think, I read about right. wealth creation yeah. by Robert Kiyosaki. And he's written, I don't know how many books in that series, but a lot, a dozen plus, I would think. Um, he also invented a game called Cash Flow 101. And there is a version called Cash Flow 202 as well. 101 is what the Americans the American expression to mean ground level, basic level. What did you call it just now? Entry level. Yeah. Um, and it is, um, I don't really like games of any description. Um, if you said, let's play, it's like, oh, no, thanks. But what this does phenomenally, and I, I actually, I believe it's over and above what they intended when they invented this game, especially yeah. when I play it with clients, is if I'm teaching them and I know them through my coaching and I'm firing on all cylinders when it comes to watching them out of the corner of my eye listening to what they say watching how they play coaching them while they play it is an absolute stonking opportunity for a massive change about their relationship with money and um, I'm thinking now of the delegates there one who hasn't been before all the rest of them have at least two of them cried on their first game because it's very emotional when you understand how you have been limiting yourself with the thoughts you grew up with around money. Yeah. I, I found the most life changing bit for me was about the record keeping. Hmm. You get that little, little, little card, which is really simple and it's got assets and liabilities and you have to keep your, every time you do and throw it, throw the dice and, and get a deal and change your circumstances, you have to update your, record keeping and it's actually really really easy once you've done it a few times but I remember feeling how incredibly impenetrable it felt in at the beginning and how easy it got towards the end and how much I absolutely loved doing it well that's why I play two games with them one in the morning where we do it by the rule book and we learn and yeah. one in the afternoon when we throw the rule book out the window and because they've learned the principles by then and they know it's easy and they can have a lovely time but I totally agree with you about when you get the sheet because everybody sits down at the table they go oh, I'm dreadful at maths me and then they demonstrate exactly the opposite they can do bloody mental <laughs> arithmetic which I can't do I have to have get a calculator out you know they're amazing they're they're um so they're telling themselves they're rubbish at maths and then they go on to demonstrate so I just watch them do this I watch them say I'm rubbish at maths I watch them demonstrate exactly the opposite and then about an hour later I said I thought you said you were rubbish at maths you could do that better than me and I'm an accountant you know it, it, it's just and they go oh 
Yes. So yeah. they get that. It's marvellous. Anyway, I don't believe Rich Dad intended that. I think I think I add value to the game by the way I teach it. And, and if it's people I know, clients I know, and I know I can extrapolate it to their situation in real life as well. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, love, yeah, it. Really. love it. Yeah, I mean, love you it. Know, and I love that, that. That gives you a tool along with, you know, a cash flow forecast on a spreadsheet that you can update regularly. It gives you a tool to take a snapshot of your own finances once a month you know oh, and also a reason for doing that because it's exciting and interesting yeah well that's exactly the point it changes it changes money from yeah being scary and dull to yes exciting and interesting yes it does yes it does yeah. isn't that wonderful yeah i love it and if money were no object that's probably the only thing i'd want to do because it's so transformative for the players well just play play cash flow games <laughs> yes do them often do them often do them twice a month yeah that'd be nice wouldn't it yeah. You've got some lovely venues as well, haven't you? I have. They're quite, it's quite knackering on me. That's the only thing I will say. Yeah. If I get up at five and leave here at six and drive for three hours and do that for until five o'clock and then come home, I probably won't get out of bed much next weekend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile because a client can have a change in a day that might take us a year to achieve in other ways. Absolutely. Wait, uh, sorry, I missed why you're driving three hours. Where are you going? I'm going across to West London, but, you know, uh, during rush hour, that's the point. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And actually the maps all say an hour and 20 minutes, and you think, yeah, that road alone can take an hour to go up. You know? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Probably when I left London, was everywhere it took at least two hours to get anywhere. Well, quite. Interesting, I'll go past my old flat, and uh, frankly, that's about halfway. So if I was doing that journey from my old flat, I'd probably be more sanguine about it. But anyway, I'm sure it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah. Right, so focus. Right, of the week. you've got a focus of the week, haven't you? I have got a focus of the week. It's it's a, a real life one in in you know real time too. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, my, my my sister Sarah has given notice just because she wants to focus on her own things. And I have the challenge now of she looks after both myself and my social media leverage activities. And she looks after one of my clients who has a similar amount of social media leverage activities. And she's got um, tick lists. She's got processes. She's got templates. She's got it all set up. And she's now filming herself doing, you know, filming her screen, doing the tasks. So I've requested that. Uh, she thinks it's overkill. She thinks they should be able to follow it from a tick list. I know that when you get to a new bit of software and you don't know where to look for the box to tick, it's much easier if you've got a video to watch and, and see what someone else does. So I have to recruit myself a new VA. Not a bad thing in itself because I'll probably be able to get a full-time person um, in the Far East for, you know, but I have to recruit for attitude and train. That's the thing. You're not going to get someone who knows how to do lots of different things. Although I did get a lead yesterday of someone who might be, might be suitable. The question is, you know, obviously bud budget is limited. How do you onboard a new person when you've got someone else existing doing the job how much overlap time do you need because obviously you have to pay two people while you're doing that you know how could I make this transition as because I'm having quite a bit of a panic about it to be honest so mm -hmm. I, I knew your, your clear headedness would help, help me think yeah do you know what I think it's the same as my panic about driving to West London I think this will be easier than we're worried about H have you asked Sarah how long she thinks it will take to do a handover in real time no, she just thinks someone else who's half competent is going to be able to pick it up and do it. But if, yeah, you know, you remember, you remember back to the olden days when we had a job? Yes. When you went in, they either said, Mary used to do it like this and expect you to do it like Mary for a bit. Or they were a bit chaotic and didn't really know how it worked and you had to work it out yourself. Uh, but if you if Mary was still there and you had a handover period, I remember that being quite itchy and I could never wait till Mary went so that I could do it my way. I think, you know, a baton passing of some description is ideal. If she's doing tick lists and videos, I, I, I think that is the handover. I'm not sure they a conversation would be useful, perhaps. And her being available to the person. Uh, now and again if they're stuck and want to ask a question yeah, I think yeah. That, yeah 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 but how can someone who's never done any of this before come in and efficiently from day one keep the system rolling well do we have a apart from the tick list and the videos do we have a sort of work schedule 
Yes, that's the first yeah. thing I said to do. Draw up what yes. you do on every day yes. for each of us. Yeah. And, then, and then from there, they can click through that document into another document that lists the exact tasks on that. Yes, task. yes, exactly. And then from there, they've got, um, t- uh, li- you know, click throughs on the detailed do this then do this sheet yes yes and, and a link to watch the video but and I, if it was me if i was the incoming person i'd want to follow that for a bit and then i'd want to reinvent it in my own way well i don't want them reinventing it in their own way because i've laid well, out you've got to leave a bit of room for that remember what we always said is remember steve running the b and b you give them the how we do it here procedures manual and then yeah. you let them improve it because yeah, anything so- done then well, they put it in a drawer and ignore it for months. <laughs> well, quite. You, you've got to allow, if, depending on what you, if you're higher entry level, which I can't imagine you will, um, then you've got more training and more more policing and, you know, all yeah. that kind of thing. So, so, okay, so do I just say, here it is, the How We Do It Here manual, start today and look at what you should be doing on Monday and do it? Or do I make time in my diary to be available and show them how to do it? In fact, I don't even know how she does some things because she's been so efficient at, at finding out how to do them and then doing them. Do I make, do I, because what James James says is, is you, you show people how to do it with them watching you. You then get them to do it uh, with you watching them. And then you get them to do it and you check what they did. Now yes. I I don't I can't do that because she's not prepared to show anyone anything. All they've got to have is their vi- the videos, which is the same as someone showing someone. Else. Yeah, but once you've got that stuff from Sarah, if you have a look at it, it is the same as showing exactly. Um, and so I think the more time you make available to this new person, if you think they're the right one, the better. And I like the show swap and what was the third one? Be available uh, to them when they get yeah, stuck or something. Supervise, yeah. Mm, yeah. Supervise. Well, I think that's key. I mean, if Sarah's going to effectively show and then you're going to, I think you've definitely got to stand by when that, when the new person goes solo and expect that to take a bit longer than normal. Yeah. Because actually we could abdicate with Sarah because Sarah was Sarah with a newbie. You'll have to delegate and manage. And so just to begin with until they become a Sarah. Okay. So, so I'm going to, the thing is if they're in the far East, our time zones aren't going to work. Oh no, that's true. So, um, I'm going to have to make time to do a bit. So perhaps for a, a week, they could be watching the videos and then and going through you know, the tick list. And then the first week they get to do it themselves, I could be there and we could do it together. And then the, the third week they could try doing it themselves with me and Sarah on call if, if they get stuck. I'm trying to get... It might, it might not take them that long. It depends on the delegate, doesn't it? On the candidate, I mean. Well, no, the candidate is not going to know how to do any of this because that we're going to recruit for attitude rather than um, skills, unless I'm very, very lucky to find someone who's moving on from someone else. I hope you're very, very lucky because yeah, actually starting from scratch is a much bigger job. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But, um, but that's... Apparently- I mean, they're not mutually exclusive. You know, I, I wouldn't want attitude only. I'd want skills plus attitude. Well, you're not going to get skills plus attitude. It, you know, oh. you're, you're, well, that's a limiting yeah. belief, isn't it? Well, I don't believe that. Okay, all right. Well, I'll I'll choose to be hopeful then. Yes, good one. Because that's actually that's what you did before with the phone. Yeah, I think you've got to choose to be hopeful. I mean, I think when we're, it's a bit like anything we do in business. We have to believe in a in a world full of people and opportunity that the one that we want is out there in all of that eight billion people i, I would yeah. think more than that actually and i would also you know the, the lady that you liked before that we've mentioned this week who went you know patricia yeah. and then you had chachi neither of them were in the far east were they uh no patricia was in portugal and chachi was in the far east yeah ah okay so you know they won't necessarily be in the far east i'm thinking yeah uh, the other option that I could do, which someone mentioned yesterday, which would be good, would be to hire a general VA part time and then get them to hire or, or either get them to hire someone or me hire someone who is part time to actually do the jobs. And the general VA and the part time person go through the, the, the tuition together. Um, and then the so I end up basically with two part timers and a general VA. And the general VA supervises the two part-timers and make sure things get done. And and then ha- by having two part-timers, I'm always going to have one person who knows what to do in case the other person leaves or gets sick or disappears. 
Because that's the other challenge. You hire one person full time and they don't work out. I'm going to have to pick up the slack on doing this gr- vast amount of, of quite ticklish, time consuming and tedious jobs for both me and my client. Mm. What do you think of that idea? Well, I think if your business was bigger, definitely. Um, and if you're thinking it's going to grow into that, definitely. Um, I don't want it's to. interesting. This this is at odds. Your fear around this is at odds with what you said about there's lots of entry level digital marketing jobs out there. You kind of went. It's the current. It's the coming. It's not just the coming thing. It's the here thing. Um, you know, it's here digital marketing. I don't know. I think if oh, I was going to build a digital marketing business with more clients, then I would be going down the let's hire a general VA. Yeah, I agree. But you're not going to build that business, are you? No. no. I only want someone to do mine and Jane's stuff. Yes, you want an appropriately sized sledgehammer and no more. Yeah. So that is a general VA, isn't it? I don't know. You know that woman who we interviewed in the Far East? I bet she manages underlings in the Far East, is what I'm saying. No, no, she doesn't. She's in Greece, um, in Crete, and she, she's got a very strange system. That ah. Anyway, my point, my point is that models for this exist. I think... Our worry, and we've discussed it on here before, is the budget doesn't stretch to Western talent. It could stretch to Western talent if it was part time. But I have had the carrot dangled of, oh, you could get a full time person for that kind of money. Well, you don't want a full time one just for the sake of it, do you? I, I would love a full time person because I could then expect them to be I could. Ex- I've got something for them to work on the rest of the time. Okay, so let's talk about what is the ideal person here. They might be available full time. They'll be affordable on a full time, affordable full time on the budget that you've got, and they'll have the right attitude. And you're prepared to put in the work based on Sarah's handover documents and videos and things to make sure they're successful. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. I think you've got to put you've got to put that work in in order to get what you want. I'm willing to. I just don't know how to structure it. Because, you know, I, I could make myself available for a week or two weeks. You know, I, is, is that what I need? Well, to do? I, I don't think the person will be a child. I think your, your, your availability has to respond to the candidate, the delegates, the person you pick. Yes, but does my availability mean that I'm just there in case they have questions? Or does my availability mean that we, we do things together for the first time? I don't week? know. I don't know until, you, until the person. Oh. So if the person, if you tell me in 10 days time, oh my God, you'll never believe it. We found this absolute paragon of virtue. She's so able to do that. Then your availability is different to, oh my God, we're starting from scratch with somebody who's got a fantastic attitude, but knows nothing. Mm. It's got to respond to who you hire or who you test. I think Yeah, you could test more than one, make them compete for the job by doing a bit chaotic, but Ooh. possible. I could think up, yeah, because I do have things they could do things on that wouldn't be um, mission critical. Dangerous, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, is there an hourly rate or where do you... No, where do, there's a part-time rate and a full-time rate. Can you give me a rough idea of what they are? In Oh, yeah, it's about $500 a month um, full-time. And how many hours? So what's an hourly rate out oh, of that? No, um, well, full-time is um, sort of, t- I don't know, 10 to... Ten till five, something like that. How many hours is that? Uh, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you pay for lunchtime? I don't know. Seven, seven hour day. By five, five, seven to 35 times four, 70, 140 hours. What's $500 divided by 140 hours? Low, isn't it? I don't think that in this, there's not room in the budget for a manager and two sub, 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 sub whatever you call them, subbies. No, I don't I think. Start, I could start with a general, I could start with a part time general assistant get them to learn the, how to do things and then we would hire another part-time general assistant who would be the, the, it's the NOAA principle that you've always got two people who know how to do any job so, so can you split the workload in half but, but if you want them both to do know how to do any job see it's my brain just won't get its head around. no 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 I don't really get structure anyway and I don't do this for this is why I don't do this. Uh, so you've got to go to those forums then where people do this. Like uh, 
Yeah, what like Chris Tucker's company? Well, I don't know the ones that I don't because I'm not in. I yeah, don't I move do, in those. I circles. do think I should go. I could go and just hire a team member in a place where, and then just hand over the documents and the and the schedule and expect and expect them to do it because they they will tra- you know they will have trained people. But a you're going to pay a lot more money. Well, like, here's an idea. Here's an idea. What about if you found one more Jane type client? Would that take the heat off? the concern for the cost of replacing Sarah yes yeah well I don't want to ah okay well in that case we don't need all of this infrastructure then we just need somebody who can do what Sarah's been doing yeah and a bit more if they've got slack I know I'm making this so much bigger in my head than it needs to be I know yes that's a good point isn't it like me and my drive across London competent women I don't know why we do that I tell you what we I think we're doing we're not catastrophizing I think we're thinking through all eventualities so that we can respond in the moment to the circumstances it's preparedness that's what it is in my mind and it'll go much easier than that uh, because we're prepared to cope with whatever might come up but not all of the things that we're thinking might come up are going to come up yeah so it's professionalism in a way <laughs> i i think we should look for somebody or, or a series of somebody's who's got some great people with who they know are underemployed yes well again you know that in the in the, what james did was he started with one person then he asked them for a referral to a next person and he yes. built a whole team of 40 people that all came from that you know referrals from other team members quite quite and they're all in the far east are they Yes. Which works well with his Australian time zone, of course. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. I mean, yours could be in, where's Zoltan, Romania? Uh, They could be in Eastern Europe. They could be in Portugal, same time zone. Quite. Ask Zoltan if he knows anybody. Yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. I'm thinking of what is inexpensive labour in our own time zone. Romania and Greece may even be the same time zone. Yeah, that's right, true. <laughs> you know, I hadn't even thought of asking him. I mean, he's, he's absolutely brilliant. He, Quite. He's, he just set up a website for me. I'm not joking, for $10 the other day. Yes, I know. Imagine it could be that simple. Yeah. So he might know that a, v, a VA or someone who's looking yes. for VA kind of work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's a genius idea, that is. Well, I think it's back to like how you manifested your phone. Who do I know who might know somebody who knows yeah. somebody yeah, yeah, who can, yeah, yeah. you know, it's that. It would be so nice to be able to give someone in a country like that a really good i totally agree yeah totally agree yeah perhaps perhaps it's the philippines angle that's giving me the panic i think it might be yeah the, the fact that you know it'll be weird to work if i have to work with them it'll be very difficult because they're in the middle of the night yeah it might be that's yeah. why i was thinking you know when i worked with sandra do you remember she was in toronto and she was behind me but she has a team of underlings now but you know the, the combined hourly rate is 70 bucks and that doesn't go very far so we are looking for people where the money we're happy to pay goes a long way in their economy um and actually i think some of these people well i think quite a lot of these people all the people i've met from eastern europe through uh where i was living last year and through the cleaning business are highly educated people who are very grateful for the work and have fantastic english i mean the people in greece who work as waiters you know they've got like double degrees and things i know i know yeah i know know i'm gonna do i'm gonna put a job description on upwork and I'm going to absolutely gun for my most ideal client. I was going to say that. Response. I'm yes. going to look for someone part time because Sarah's been doing the work part time, and then yes. I'm going to get them. And we're going to recruit someone else together to do after a while. Bit, yeah, after a while to do yes. that. That this person doesn't enjoy so much. Yes. And so I'll have two, but but they'll train them how to do everything. So I've got two people now after everything, and they'll both be working on the bits that they most enjoy. Okay, and I, one last tip. Expect it only to be good enough. Well, yes, a good enough is better than me. Having to yes, do. not perfect, not paragon of virtue, not miracle worker, no, no. just a human being like yes. Sarah and you and me yes. and the listener, a human being doing their best, all things considered. And, and that's how I found Patricia, to be fair. We're on Upwork, so there we go. There you go. Marvellous. And I, I was going to recommend the letter to Santa because if you have that very clear description of what you're looking, it, it, you're much more likely to find the person than they you. Yeah. It's a cosmic order. Yes, it is. Oh, I feel much better now. <laughs> it was the Philippines thing that was throwing me. Yes, in the time zone. Yeah, yes. and actually that doesn't need to apply anymore, does it? No, it doesn't. I mean, Zoltan. Uh, is he Romanian, Zoltan? I, well, he, I think he comes from Serbia. Wherever and are is. you able to communicate with him easily? Oh, yes, I've got his email. I mean, what yes. I meant was, does he do English? 
Oh, he's, he's, he honestly, his English is fantastic. He's cleverer than us. Well, then yeah. let's assume, <laughs> let's assume that a good quantity of his country folk are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, no, he really is fantastic, though. I'm, you know, yeah. I've been constantly amazed by how good he is. I found him let's, on that. Let's place. ask Zoltan. Yeah, I'll Sultan, and then if I have to, put a job description on that work. Yes, or both. Because really? if you did both, it counts as doing all you can from where you are with what you have. Yes. God, I feel so much better, I can't tell you. I'm so pleased. <laughs> and do you, mean, do you know what? I've no idea with the answer to that question, to be honest, but we worked it out between us, didn't we? Yeah, it's having someone to talk to who knows you so well as well. <laughs> well, so knows what you were panicking about. Yeah, well, even mm. if you didn't know what I was panicking about. I mean, I think one of the boons that came with Sarah was, and you always say this when you were working with Sarah and Phoebe, is that because they mostly love you except when you're being uber annoying they can compensate because they know you as a person and that's too much to expect from a non-family member subcontractor I think yeah although it happened to me now I think about it people that were two assistants that worked with me for a long time they got to know me so well that they could do say things to me like do you need a diet coke you know that kind yeah, of thing, yeah. in a stressful moment well, I mean, you know, I said to her from the very beginning, these are the things I'm good at and these are the things I'm terrible at. So you need to keep an eye on, on me and make sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's half nanny as well, isn't it? Yeah. And also, mm. you know, I work so much better when I'm working with someone else because I deliver the stuff. Yes, they need I know. I know. I probably wouldn't do it for myself. So no. Important. Well, we've done the job. We've made you feel better. Yes. That's what's <laughs> that's no, all tell happening. <laughs> tell me, oh, I'm pleased. Tell me what your word of the week is. My word of the week is cough. I've got an annoying cough. I thought it, I don't know what's causing it. It's making me feel I can't walk anyway because I run out of breath. I, it feels like a cold that never comes to a head, and I um, just it's driving me crazy. And when you're a lady of a certain age, you have to have very strong strong muscles in certain departments when you have suddenly get coughing fits yes i know i know, I know what you mean and less said about that the better nicola Absolutely. Uh, now my word of the week you bloody chose yesterday it was it was family so i've had to find a new one so i've picked ease because so far 2019 is far easier than anticipated and nicer to and more upbeat than horrid 2018 yeah very good well i'll 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 have some of your ease as well yes quite uh, coffees <laughs> I had this mad idea last week that I might create a couple of paid groups about writing regular yeah, newsletters yeah. and or creating and maintaining a half decent Facebook page. It was a bit of a rush of blood to the head. Two nice people said yes, and it's going out in my newsletter while we, as we speak, it's going out in my newsletter. It's about online writing and consistency in that and how to come up with content. Um, I, I'm slightly over the idea already, or I think it's something I could do, would probably enjoy, but in view of having introduced Crazy Bespoke, it might be something I either do or don't do. So I'm going to see, if the universe sends me a quorum, I'll probably do it, maybe for three months. If if it doesn't, I won't. But uh, I don't, well, you know, I, I really, I'm very proud when I can tell you in this section, nothing to report. <laughs> and the fact that like, two days running, I've had something to report is slightly worrying me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to give us some project updates on the podcast. Lovely. But I'm afraid that it's not good news. <laughs> oh. Uh, just basically, the December was down. But then now I've just realised we were actually short two episodes, weren't we? At least, yes. Yeah. So if we had two or three episodes to in, we would be up on our numbers, I've just realised. So that's okay. good news. So always make sure you're looking at the right thing, is the moral of that story. Yes. Can I can I say something to you about the podcast? Yeah. Um, a client was saying to me yesterday she was thinking of starting a two hander, a bit like you know, yeah, you know, not All copying us, but you know, in the way that we do it. Yeah. And I said I wondered if we had our time over again, whether we would do it in seasons. You know, a lot of podcasts are done in seasons, aren't they? So you do you do thirteen weeks, then you have the Easter holidays, then you do thirteen weeks, and you have the summer holidays, and then you do thirteen weeks, and it's Christmas. You know, would we do? Would you? Do you think? I mean, I'm not suggesting we're changing this one at all. But if you were advising a client starting up, yes, I would, because I don't actually believe that they have to be every single week. No, I think in the beginning, I think you have to you have to launch with five or six, and then you have to be consistent for a while in the beginning. But a while could be three months. Mm. and and so yes seasons are a good idea and everyone does them so everyone's used to them now quite yes 
Isn't that interesting? That so that's changed. I, mm. I've realised as well. I do have something else to tell you in project updates. Shall I go? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, as per yesterday's show or or last week's show or whatever we're calling it, I, I was saying I hadn't made up my mind how I was going to show up in my writing in 2019. Well, I had a another rush of blood to the head overnight, which is I'm going to make Monday my writing day, and save up topics to write about, and just have that space on Mondays to explore that part of me. I've diarised to start on Monday the 14th, and what's good about that is what I teach my clients to do which is to put your best energy and your favorite into your favorite thing so rather than waiting until I've served all my clients and then do my writing I'm going to do my writing on Monday and then serve my clients on Tuesdays Wednesdays Thursdays and Fridays. Oh, I think diary zoning is one of the undersung heroes of productivity I really mm, I just suddenly noticed that Mondays were free I must have decided towards the end of last year I wouldn't coach on a Monday afternoon and therefore I've got most of Mondays free which is nice. Right. So what I do is I schedule every afternoon out for writing time, which means that if I do have an extra project to to take on board, I know that I've got plenty of slack in my diary just by deleting a couple of writing time days. And also mm. I, I put it in there because I know I'm never going to start ha- r- do writing unless I've got plenty of spare time to do it. So I need some prevaric. It's the only thing I, I prevaricate about. And I need plenty of prevarication time in order to make space within that time for actually writing. <laughs> oh, I will definitely prevaricate on Monday mornings. I know that already because I learned yeah. that with the book. And, yeah. you know, get up slowly and sit at the desk for a bit and go on to Facebook. And, and, and then at lunchtime, I'll go, oh, you've got to get a grip, Judith. And yeah. then I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think this is really interesting? We talk, this, talk about this a lot. And, and there's some really funny things online about how famous writers prevaricated in the olden days. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Spend, you know, four hours sharpening their quills and things like that, and you could totally understand it. Well, the first thing, the first thing I ever knew about the existence of procrastination was an article I read written by a writer long before you know ages eons ago when I I was an accountant and didn't even know what procrastination was, wasn't coaching didn't have as much spare time, hadn't started writing or anything. It wasn't even in my reality. But I read this article, which I thought was very funny, where a writer said, you know, I'm sitting at home and all sorts of jobs, which are not attractive to me normally, suddenly become so. (laughs) The washing up, the washing up, the loading and the unloading of the dishwasher, the putting on of the laundry, the hanging up of the laundry. You know, all of these things you've got to get. And my clients do this as well. Just got to get everything out of the way first before I can do my thing. No. And and the other thing is that those jobs, I do them in a much more meticulous, zen-like fashion. <laughs> yes. So like, no yes. washer has to be done in really symmetrical precision. My latest <laughs> procrastination thing is wiping wiping light switches. I've I, I walk I, I notice that you know finger marks on light switches, so I end up going around the house wiping all my light switches. <laughs> yeah, that's very funny. That is very funny. But I tell you what's really I noticed this when I was writing the book, which was August twenty seventeen, I think. Um, I, I noticed. Oh my god, I didn't even know I could procrastinate. What is this? Is this taking yeah. me to this plumbing new depths? And it's like, but do you know what? I I reframed it, but I honestly think it's the truth rather than the fake. I think it's part of the process. I do too. I think you need, um, that's why I need lots of time for writing time, even though I can actually write quite efficiently when I get going. I yeah, me too. I turn it out because I need that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it's part of the process. So we mustn't beat ourselves up for it. No, I don't. I never beat myself up for anything much. I think listeners will agree that with procrastination, there is the potential to beat yourself up for that because it feels wasteful. It does, yes. But I'm practicing. But actually, if you say it's part of the process, if you, for instance, go, oh, look at me, I'm wiping light switches, I must be writing in my psyche. I just, it's not, it's just not coming out of my fingers yet. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> and that's how I see it. Literally, that is how I see it, Nicola. Yeah, and I think you have to get into writing is such a peculiar thing. It's so different to everything else. I think you have to, well, it's a cre- it must be like painting or writing poetry or anything like that, I suppose. You have to, turn your brain from busy 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 into slow and creative mode perhaps it's just a a way of shutting down your computer and restarting it in a different mode or warm-up exercises like a sports person does yeah you can't skip those that's good we like it yeah now my system is exactly the opposite of yours i have all of my stuff in the morning and then i do my clients at two and three in the afternoon 
Uh, okay yeah you do your work in the morning and then you have your afternoons off i do exactly the same as you but opposite yeah, well, I, I don't start till 10, so it's not like that. Well, neither do I. Neither do I much. But, um, you know, I m- mornings are for me. I, I can squeeze a client in there if they've got small children and two and three doesn't work because they've got to go and yeah. fetch them. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, we're flexible is what we're saying, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. Now, tell me who or what's impressed. Well, oh, my God, Judith, I've been so impressed with this. You know how things just come out of nowhere in a synchronistic kind of fashion. I was, I can't remember what I was doing. I was either talking to someone or I was um, reading something. And, or no, I know, I was walking, I was working through Andre Chaperon's new course that I told you about last week. Yeah. And something, oh, he started to talk about... Um, Stephen Pressfield, The War of Art, who yes. wrote The War of Art and also Going Pro, which yep. had a big impact in the personal development space. And I think he said something along the lines of he's got a fantastic editor who taught him a, a system that this editor's used for years and years and years when pitching to the big five publishing companies and pitching to Hollywood for films and screenplays and things. And the the system is... There's two parts to it. There's the full scap method and then there's the story grid. And the full scap method is a way of um, systematically getting your story out of your head onto one sheet of full scap before you even start writing. And um, I thought, that sounds interesting. I'll go, and, I'll go and find out about that. And I found that Stephen Pressfield, who is also a very, very successful writer of fiction, including three books that were set in the Peloponnese. You know, so right down the road from me, he's written books about Alexander the Great and he's also written books about, you know, the Spartans. And he is incredibly phenomenally successful. I thought he'd just done the War of Art and, you know, pretty much that was it. But no, no, it's 30 to 50 books under his, under his belt. Yeah. And he's, he came across this um, agent called Sean and this agent told him the method that he'd developed when he started being an agent and he wanted to be the most successful agent ever. There's no way to teach... There's no curriculum in any universities to learn how to become a book agent or a, a, a movie agent or, or any kind of agent actually yeah. you go and sit at the knees of greats and you hope that they teach you or it's you know you could pick up enough from them to be good yourself there's no sort of structured formal training for it anyway he developed his own structured formal training for it by developing this system called the story grid and if you go to YouTube and type in um, the story grid, Stephen Pressfield, you'll come across five or six little videos that are absolutely brilliant that walk you through. It's very clever marketing, actually, because it walks you through the story grid and it gives you, gives you glimpses of it and also the full scat method, but actually doesn't give it to you. It, you know, so you have to go and buy the book the story grid and I highly recommend it. I'm galloping through it right now. And it's another little tool like, um, like the story arc, you know, and the hero's journey that you don't realize is going on in storytelling and filmmaking and books and everything until you become aware of it, you know, Mm -hmm. and then you suddenly start to see it everywhere. The story grid, I particularly like it and it gives you a really nice, but the point is that if you, he says it's much easier for an, an editor at one of the big five public, much easier to get an editor, much easier to get an agent, much easier to get a book deal. Um, if your story writing conforms to this loose structure, because it helps them to help you to become a better author. And it's, it's like a lingua franca. It's a language yeah. that everybody understands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, it's growing and growing, becoming more and more popular, but um, hardly anyone knows about it still. And I, the, then I, I, you know how I like to, carry this is my form of prevarication right? <laughs> reading about successful authors and how they do it so Stephen Pressfield and this Sean I can't remember his surname have created a publishing company of their own called Black Irish Books and the reason they've done that because they and they just publish non-fiction business inspirational kind of books mm-hmm. and fiction you know, really not, they don't do anything else. It's just um, completely escapist fantasy fiction and business fiction. And I just, okay. you know, the whole business, thing. No, you don't mean business fiction, do you? No, I don't. I mean business no. 
fiction. Yeah. Non-fiction, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, it, you know, the, the whole thing is just compelling for me, and, it, and not least because this Sean guy is one of the best science fiction editors in the world. Yes, and um, the book, The Story Grid, is that written by them both or just by Stephen Pressfield, just so that people can find it? Not sure, but if you put in The Story Grid in YouTube, you'll find the videos, and then yep. they link to the book. Yeah. So it's... As long as Stephen Pressfield is related to it, we could probably find yeah. it on Amazon as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I should have done... Uh, sorry, I, I thought I knew his surname, but it just went at the last minute. No, point. that's okay. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, but... You so know, what's impressed you is the... Ex- what's impressed you exactly? The fact that there are... There is another tool out there that I can use as a new writer to make my structuring of my story better so that I'm more likely to be able to get a book deal, an agent... And yeah, a, yeah. yeah. And the other thing is this Sean guy, because he's a, a sci-fi buff, you can actually hire him to be your sci-fi editor Brilliant. before you even start writing. Brilliant. And he'll work with you to guide you to create the tightest, most gripping story you possibly can. Yes, gorgeous. Uh-huh. Now, what I think is very funny about that story, and I've written it down and I've put a circle around it, is I wonder how many of our younger listeners even know what the word full scap means. <laughs> our American ones will, because they, they, they hung on to full scap for years, but we stopped using full scap about 30 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's an A4 pad, basically, isn't it? No, it's bigger than A4. It's a different size from A4. It's bigger than, it's longer and thinner than A4, but full scap is a, is a, we used to have both sizes of paper. Do you want this in full scap or A4? A4 was the, the, the Johnny come lately of paper sizes, and full scap was a trad, probably pre decimalization size. Um, funny, but but what a funny word it is when you write it down, full scap. Yeah, yeah. and it comes in different colours as well. Yeah, it means size of paper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, Phoebe and Nelson just say to me sometimes, where, do, where you know, what's that word? I, I know. I just use words and they go, what? Exactly. There's a lovely yeah. thing that's going the rounds at the moment where you put a, an old-fashioned um, rotary telephone in front of teenagers and ask them to make a telephone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me tell you who or what's impressed. Today, uh, January the 11th, the day we're recording, not the day the show goes out, is the 27th birthday of my youngest nephew, Jeremy, who I'm going to tell you about in a moment, interestingly, given what you've just said, because he's a golf agent. Now, ah. he, he was born in 2002, which was the same year that my father died. Um, my father died in the April, Jeremy having been born in the January. So it's very easy for me to work out how old Jeremy is every year because he's, <laughs> he's been alive as long as my father's been dead. And when I was cleaning my teeth this morning and thinking about telling you this, I was 30 eight then I think and I'm 63 now and that's quite a long time for your father to be dead I know your father died your your father father died yeah. even before that when you were younger but Jeremy's been alive for 27 years and achieved what he's a- achieved which is you know not not huge amounts but impressive I'm going on to tell you that in a minute in the 27 years that my father's been dead and that just seems sort of rather weird anyway it always makes it easy for me to remember how old he is, whereas the other two, I have no idea. Now, uh, golf, you'll remember, is his passion, and he finally got his dream job working for a golf agent, where what they do is they look after the player's every need. Yeah. So if you are a professional golf player and you are appearing anywhere in a tournament, you know, Jeremy will probably organise quite a lot of elements of that from your, yeah. air, from your air ticket upwards or your private plane upwards or whatever it is. And they manage their careers as well. But what I want to tell you about here is it's so funny because, you know, I'm a spade, I'm a, let's call a spade a spade merchant. It sort of defines me, doesn't it? Yeah. But there are six or seven areas of the professional sports people's careers where they make money outside their winnings and their playing fees, but they're not called a spade as a spade. For instance, clothes are called apparel. Yes. And watches are called timepieces. Okay. Uh, do you see what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah. well, Gem, it's, a, it's, a, it's an outfit, it's a clothes and a watch. No, it's not. It's apparel and timepieces. So they've got all of these sprawncy names to make it slightly more elegant as a way of making money out of being a professional sports person and, of course, a percentage out of being their agent. I can't remember what the others are, but they all made me such, they made me laugh so much because they're like, I mean, who calls their watch their timepiece? It's, it's interesting because um, watching people like Gary Vee has got an apparel deal with um, a, a, a uh, footwear company. So he yeah. brings out sneakers, you know, yep. he, he designs sneakers on a regular basis. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, it's either called apparel or merch. 
Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. And then there's, and so there's apparel, clothes, and I know the rest of it would be the equipment that you wear, you know, that you, you hit with and balls and all that kind of thing. I don't, I don't know what that is. There must be a special name for that. There's, there is, there's a special name for all of it. It's like, I, I kind of, he's so into it, I kind of want to put a pin in that balloon in a funny sort of way so that he can see. Anyway, we've exchanged texts this morning and he so gets me because I said, you know, Friday's the best day for a birthday. And he goes, I'll send you a picture later by email because he knows that my, he knows that my phone is so outdated I can't receive. Uh, um, photos on it so it, that's so cool anyway I've got one final go. thing one final yes. thing that impressed me this week oh yesterday the independent reported that they had that the scientists have received the second burst of sequence sounds from another galaxy which is they get sounds all the time from and, and all of them could be random but they've had two bursts two lots of sounds that are in a specific sequence that could only have been put together by intelligent life. Now, let me tell you that that's what the establishment is prepared to tell you. There's so much more activity than that going on. And sooner or later, very soon, actually, I think we're going to see it all and you're going to love it. I don't want it in my lifetime. I'm desperate to meet an you, alien. It could be this year. Oh, I so want to meet an alien. I know. I said to the kids last night, I've always wanted that ever since I was a tiny But, you know, they mostly don't tell us because they think it'll worry us. Well, it would, wouldn't it? it they'd be at the absolute well, it, I'm not sure it would. <clears throat> not, if, not if they weren't aggressive. If they were uh, benign, why would that terrify us? Well, well, the whole thing, yeah, I mean, I've just started reading um, Intervention by Julian May again, who's one of the um, best sci-fi writers. She's a woman, but she sounds like a man. And um, it's all about, you know, benign alien races coming to um, stop us from blowing ourselves yeah, up. I don't think it's as much fiction as, fiction as you think. Oh, exciting. I mean, I'm not in the least bit interested in it. It's a real turn off for me. But really? I, I don't think, I don't think it's as fiction, as fiction. In fact, I think that they protect us from spaceships and and. So they're um, pooping out the news, are they? Yes, exactly. My, my favourite bit of YouTube video, which I go and watch regularly, is the one of the Spanish fishermen who see the um, UFO coming out of the water and, and mm. being hunted by um, jets. It's so cool. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, Americans on various form forums I'm on are endlessly posting photographs of things they've seen in the sky, and some of them are very real. Oh, my God. That's I know. I know. <laughs> All of this could become irrelevant soon, Judith. Yeah, I know. I know. Life's going to change. It's going to be, and I think it's going to be this year, and I think that's why I'm so upbeat about everything. Mm-hmm. Right, that was a bit of a long one. You've got a bit of an editing job there. No, I'll be good. Don't you worry. Okay. All right. See you later. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com.